Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Vernice Edgehill Walden, who serves as Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer of Northern Illinois University. Vernice, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Good to be here. So, well, you know, we love, of course, having leaders on the show, and you have a lot of leadership uh, in your titles you. and in the extraordinary work that you've been doing uh, at NIU. Um, and, of course, NIU's College of Visual and Performing Arts, one of our creative partners, helped to uh, help us uh, co-curate for this show. And what I thought was a lot of our audience um, either are embedded in academic environments or are doing arts in, and uh, university environments. And I was just kind of curious, from your role, being able to kind of see the broader university, how do you view the arts? And how do you view the arts in terms of its role in the university as a whole? Absolutely. So again, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I have uh, a love for the arts. Uh, I grew up in the, in the arts. And so to me, the arts provides a common language uh, across uh, communities to get, to bring people together. And I think when we think about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, we talk about, we think about how can we bring people together? How can we find common ground? And oftentimes it's been my experience throughout my career that through uh, literature and dance and uh, acting and uh, music, that there are several ways to, to, to speak a common language that uh, at least breaks the ice. If nothing else, it's gonna break the ice. And once you break that ice, then you can see people find and find connection. Absolutely. No, that is, it's so important. And I definitely so agree that, right, the arts can be this way that diversity, equity, and inclusion can be helped in other fields and other areas. Um, Cause they often show, of course, our shared human connection. And I was curious there at, at NIU, are there either any particular arts, either initiatives or things that as you, you look at them, you're like, you know what, these are things other universities might want to think about mm -hmm. um, and or especially arts programming relating to DE&I sure. um, that you might want to be able to share as well. Yeah. Sure. So two things I think come to mind. One was impromptu that uh, myself and the, the dean, uh, Dean Paul Castle, and I uh, thought about uh, right after um, actually uh, our, one of our cultural centers was vandalized. And we wanted to think of a way to bring the community together. This was around COVID um, right after George Floyd, a few months after George Floyd. And so we organized um, a street painting of Black Lives Matter in one of our main streets in campus. We had music from our jazz, uh, our director of our jazz uh, program and students that did spoken word, they danced, they sang, and we were painting at the same time. And it really was a community event that brought people together uh, to really, uh, say and, and give people an opportunity to, to see themselves as an ally in some capacity um, to the Black community, that this was our way of saying, hate doesn't live here. This is not acceptable in our community. And it was done in a very visual way. And actually that painting is still out there. It's a little faded, but it's still out there. The second one is really around belonging. So we started out in uh, 2019 looking at a speaker uh, to come to campus, John A. Powell, who talks about belonging. And we had him come and COVID happened and it was a virtual ex conversation with him. But after that, the community, not just campus community, but the DeKalb community, the comments that he made about how we, co how we can co-create a community together 
really resonated with a lot of people. And so we went beyond that lecture to talk about how we can learn about what it would take for people to feel like they belong in the community. And again, Paul Castle and I started brainstorming about what that would look like. And so we started out with um, uh, pictures of belonging. So it engaged a faculty member in uh, our photography uh, courses and she created and got her students to uh, do these photo sessions of various people across the community. Um, and they expressed what it meant to belong in NIU. It was in their own settings. Mm -hmm. And so she actually created a curriculum around it. So there's this connection between what it would take to belong and then visually creating that. We went from the these, these paintings of we belong or what it would take to belong, the, the face, we call it the faces of belonging, ended up on buses around our community, buses and uh, banners all over the community. And then we went from there to voices of, of belonging where our uh, national our public radio station did countless numbers of interviews with community members asking what it would take for you to feel like you belong in this community, not just belong in a community, but to belong in DeKalb. And we've created an art exhibit from that. And people can actually listen to the audio of these interviews. And they are, it's a traveling exhibit across our community now. So here we have opportunities around belonging that we've engaged visual and performing arts in, and uh, we're really excited about it. The next, uh, uh, the next um, belonging series will be when we're asking students to actually write about what it means to belong. Beautiful. So it's words of belonging. Right. So now we're bringing in the, the English department. And so uh, we see this as an ongoing project that we're really excited about. And we could not have done it without the partnership and collaboration from visual and performing arts. It's, it's awesome. And I love the kind of just global approach and touching on so many different areas of the arts, utilizing the different disciplines to be able to affect the, the change and the sense of connection, right? And obviously belonging. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really just, it's, it's awesome and makes me kind of wonder too, right? So in the arts, just like so many other areas, we often can struggle with these issues of inclusion and, and of diversity. And I was wondering for any in our audience who are looking at their own arts programming, especially maybe in a university or collegiate environment, mm -hmm. a conservatory environment, um, and saying, you know, we, we still are struggling with this. We're trying to get more inclusive. We're trying to be more diverse. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet. Is there any kind of either mechanisms or best practices or things that you've seen through your role, especially as chief diversity mm -hmm. officer that have worked in other areas that you are, that you would say, you know what, you should potentially consider this or try this mm -hmm. in the arts in your university setting? So I would, you know, I would say that a small group conversation is where you could start. Um, we, again, have really worked with um, our, in, our internal campus community to create dialogues uh, around a common theme. And I think the common theme is what is going to weave people um, together. And I think in an arts organization, um, and I, I've, I've been on uh, arts boards and um, really believe in, in the arts. My parents are artists. Um, and uh, I, I really, really believe that you have to start with conversation. And so I think in an arts organization, not just to talk about the craft itself, but to talk about what that craft might mean to their community. And I think developing that conversation across that, across a common craft or common um, theme is really, really important. Uh, I think about my mother, who's a textile designer, who uh, paints on silk. And she, she, her story about being an immigrant from Barbados really influences her art. Well, I'm sure that there are uh, other communities 
that have started in the arts around an immigrant story in some capacity. So you can use those stories around a craft. And I really believe that that's really, really important. Um, the other thing is, is I think that when you're, when you're an arts organization in, this, in a city, you have the opportunity to engage with that city partner. We did that with Voices and, and Faces of Belonging through the city of DeKalb, one of our major partners in this. So again, it engages people beyond our ivory towers in a conversation uh, with a common theme. Right. Awesome. I absolutely love that approach. And I think those types of collaborations, very, very key to successful uh, engagement in tackling these issues. So unfortunately, we are just about out of time, but I always like to ask my guests, they're extraordinary leaders. Um, and as you just approach leadership as a whole, um, when times are tough, when it seems like there's challenges that might be overwhelming, I can only imagine, you know, overseeing all of the issues of de and I and serving as Chief Diversity Officer for a university, there's got to be some days that, you know, it seems like some problems may not be able to get solved. Where do you turn for strength, for inspiration, um, mm -hmm. for guidance as a leader? You know, it's funny you say that. I think, uh, you know, I have a, a lot of days like that. Um, but honestly, for me, I look at family. I look at um, this, our students, the resiliency of our students. You know, they keep me coming back. They're the ones that are saying we need this. They, when I see how they are transformed, that gives me energy. Um, but I also know that I, because I grew up around a musician and an artist, that music inspires me. So I could be on my way home in tears, wondering like, how did the heck did we get here? And I will hear a song that will take me into a place that is like, nope, you still, there's still hope. And then I think the other part for me is when I think about my ancestors and what they went through, I, I don't have an excuse. There's no time to stop this work because I have all the tools that I need and I may not have all of the people that are ready to move with me, but I have to know that neither did they, but they still persist, persisted. And so those are the kinds of things that give me hope. Wow, it is just so extraordinary. Vernice Edgel Walden, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human Thank creativity you. in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you.